I have a, an interesting announcement for all of those folks who watch uh, the Mass at home because they're unable to come to, the, come to church. We're uh, very close to having live streaming working. Hopefully, next weekend, uh, Masses, which, is, which are Palm Sunday, we'll be having it going. Uh, for you, you would just go to the parish webpage and just click on the link that says li uh, live streaming. And you'll see all our masses. You'll be able to attend all our masses, whatever one you want, Saturday evening, Sunday morning, and all will all be live streamed. More important than that and all is that we should be in good shape to have Holy Thursday at 8 o'clock, Good Friday at 3 o'clock, and also uh, the, the journey to the cross at uh, 7 p.m. and the Easter vigil at uh, 10 uh, at uh, I'm sorry 8 of 8 o'clock on Holy Saturday, as well as uh, all of the uh, Easter Sunday morning masses. So everything you should be able to find it live streamed. Crossing fingers and toes and praying to Saint Electronicus, whoever is the patron of uh, live streaming. The days are coming when I will write my law deep within their hearts. All of them, from the least to the greatest, will know that I am their God. In the first reading, the prophet Jeremiah spoke about a time when God's people would be so united to God that they will know within themselves how to serve him. That time is now. God's law is written deep within each of our hearts. We do not need anyone to tell us what we should do. Deep within ourselves, we know that if we're true to God, or we know if we're not true to God. Some people will argue with us. They'll say, it's okay to get drunk or try to do this or that. They will argue that all the bad things that that people of all ages get into is really normal behavior. We know that this is a lie. Everything within us, deep within us, tells us that this is a lie. We know that we cannot behave immorally and face our God. So much of, the, of what the world tells us to do conflicts with the deep life within us. We have to recognize that what some people call normal behavior is in reality abnormal. This is our time. This is our hour. We have to choose to stand for Christ and live in peace with God and with ourselves or turn towards that which is popular and sinful and live in turmoil. That's what sin does to us. It puts us in turmoil. We make believe that we are okay with whatever is happening, but in reality, we aren't. Sometimes, we even have a hard time looking into the mirror. We cannot stand looking at ourselves because we cannot stand the person that we're becoming when our actions can contradict all that is within us. Jesus spoke about time in today's gospel. He called it his hour. When Andrew and Philip told him that the people were asking him to go to the Passover festivities in Jerusalem, Jesus knew what was going to happen. He did not run from it. He embraced it. This was his time. It was what he was put on earth to do. He would stand against evil. We all have hours, and we have our hour. We have many times in our lives when we have to stand up for God and be whom we are. In fact, all during Lent, we've been asking ourselves, am I the person that God wants me to be? Do I reflect the image of God within me? Or am I untrue to my very self? There's no question about it. There are many temptations, many ways we're tempted to hedge on our commitment to Christ. The cost of being true to the law written within our hearts can sometimes be quite heavy. We might find ourselves excluded from society, or maybe a sport, or maybe people for whom we really want to belong. It hurts to have someone say, what, 
you're too good to join us. But the peace of Christ surpasses all things. Nothing is more important than living in this peace, than living united to the Lord. We all have our hours, and we have our hour. There are continual choices for God that we make throughout our lives. These are our hours. There is also that one choice that is the reason why God placed us on earth. That's our hour. Our hour is the action that expresses who we are deep within ourselves. It's the fundamental expression of our Christian life. For some people, that hour is a public affirmation of Christ in the face of death. Little St. Agnes was probably 12 when she refused to embrace paganism and was tortured to death. Old St. Ignatius of Antioch was probably 80 when he would not let his friends bribe the Romans to save him from being thrown to the wild animals in the Colosseum. When we studied about the saints, we learned about many people who chose to suffer rather than deny Christ. There are many others whom we have not read about or heard about. The people we don't know. There is that girl with the unexpected pregnancy. It's her hour. Does she stand for Christ and bring this t- baby into the world, regardless of what would happen to her plans? Or does she walk away from her hour and walk into that abortion clinic? There's that elderly man who chose to care for his slowly dying wife because he could and because she wanted to stay at home. It's his hour. We know many others who are confronted with the choices in their lives, with their hours, and they embrace the law written within their hearts. On April 20th, 1999, our country was shocked and saddened by the horrible high school massacre at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado. 12 students and a teacher were killed. 24 others were injured as they tried to escape. One of the teenagers killed was Cassie Bernal. She was 17. The story, which many people have affirmed, is that Cassie was known to be a devoted Christian, but during the During the massacre, supposedly, one of the gunmen put a gun to her head and told her to deny Christ. She refused and was killed. Michael W. Smith went to Cassie's funeral. He was overwhelmed with the stories of her faith, as well as the faith witness of her parents. He wrote a song about about this called, This Is Your Time. In it, he sings, the time was clear for her to embrace the mystery of all that she could be. How did she get there? I don't mean how did she get to school that day. I mean, how did she get to that point in her life that she was ready for her hour? She did this by choosing Christ at various moments, the various hours of her life, and she was prepared. She was ready when her hour came. Maybe something so radical will not happen to us. Perhaps our hour will only be the sum total of the choices we have made in our lives, which we'll present to the Lord when this life is over. The big question is, are we ready for our hours? Are we ready to embrace that moment in our lives when all of our existence proclaims our union with Jesus Christ? Are we ready to embrace all that we can be? All the little yeses that we made to Christ, all those times that we deny ourselves what others say we should have to have or do, all these affirmations of our Christianity strengthen us for the total affirmation of our life, strengthen us for for our hour. Listen again to the conclusion of today's gospel. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also my servant will be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. 
I'm not soft selling religion to you. I'm not telling you that if you do this or that, everything will be easy and wonderful in your lives. No, instead, I proclaim to you what the gospel is teaching us. We are called to live and die for Jesus Christ. This is our hour. This is our time. God bless you now.